How do windows affect sound insulation? I've got this question in a couple of projects that why do we propose different sound clauses on certain windows on one and the same facade? Now, let's do a little sketch on this. Because if you have a house, it could, could look like, like this perhaps. And we have windows here and we have some a, a little bigger here. So this might be there's a bedroom in here. Room. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and, and this is the living room. And then you have over here is the road. Where you have cars that are driving past, many of them. Room, room. And they make um, a lot of noise, let's say something like that and then when you look at the window requirements and then we start to calculate them and then we might propose that we need uh, let let's say that these ones should be 37 DB sound reduction on, on, on these windows RW plus CTR like so however then we might propose that this one Oh, let's choose a thicker pen so it looks the same equals 40 dB and we're talking about it's called R is R like reduction so a higher decibel rating means that the, they, the window has a higher sound reduction that the difference on the outside to the inside is greater so that you get better sound insulation in this red one than in the green one now if the road is over here, then it should be more noise here compared to this room, which is further away from the road, right? That's, that's why it seems a bit counterintuitive to propose something like this. So I can't blame my clients if they ask me, hey, are, are you thinking the right way here? But here's, here's the reason why. Let me show you. If, if we look at the ratio, the window to wall ratio, you have in a small bedroom, the window typically constitutes a greater portion of, of the, a great, greater part of the whole partition consists of glass compared to in the living room, which is a much greater wall area. And then there's a smaller part of that big wall that is made of windows. And the wall is typically much better sound insulation than the windows. And that kind of makes sense. You know, if you just think of a, a an outer wall in a building, it's kind of thick and it's kind of solid compared to a cup, couple of, uh, of, of glass. It, they, they, they can't really achieve the same level of, of sound reduction in, in a window. So it's usually the window is what determines. But then of course, if you have a small area, which is a window, and a large area that is a high sound reduction wall, you could probably you could get away with a lower sound clause on the window because it's just a small part of the whole. Whereas if if the window is like 90% of the surface of the whole wall, then the wall doesn't really matter. Everything is determined by the window. So in a case like this, if we look at this is from the side, if you look at it from, from the top instead. Uh, if we have the wall, let's see. No, wait, I can't paint there because then I'm going to paint in the where my camera is. Let's zoom out a bit so we get some more space. Perhaps we can fit it down here. So we have the road here. Here's where the cars are driving. Oh, I don't know. This looks like cars, right? <laughs> room, room, room. Here's the sound. And here's our house. And then we have the the living room here, which has windows here and here. And then we have the bedroom here, which has a window there. And now you can see here, if we look at it from the top, the, the proportions are a, a bit off. Yeah, I, I know that, but, but it doesn't really matter for the, for the sake of the argument, because this is the 
40 dB window and here we have those 37 dB windows. Now if we calculate the ratio of wall to window you'll see that in, in this case let's say this is the the wall that is exposed to the inside of the room and over here it's this one then perhaps. So what I'm trying to illustrate here is that in this case the windows is a lower percentage of the whole partition compared to this one and that means because in the bedroom the window constitutes a larger part of the wall we need to put a better window in there and we might end up with the same composite sound reduction index if you look at both the wall and the window combined and you measure the, the sound reduction you might have the same number in both of them even though this one has a, a, another window so that's not completely intuitive but that's the reason why the the bigger the ratio of the the bigger the hole you put in your facade and put a window there the higher sound rating you need on that window and this is also important to know if you're going to build a building close to a very trafficked a road with a lot of, of traffic which means there is a lot of noise if you if you put big big windows there with a lot of glass close to a highly trafficked road you're gonna end up with some very expensive windows there so if you build in the countryside you can have big glass and uh, there's a lower risk that you need, might need to increase the sound reduction index and now if you <clears throat> if we also consider the cost it's uh, it could be typical uh, like this if we say that we have <laughs> the cost <laughs> on this axis and the db sound insulation class on the x axis then it would if we start off with like 30 db windows 37 40 45 so you will get something like this that the 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 cost per decibel is low in the beginning and then it goes like this which is typically does with just about any, everything in life that the higher higher the quality the higher the the class the more you need to pay for those extra step it it's not a linear correlation between them it's more like an exponential growth which is important to think about and uh, let's see here in today's video i am wearing a navy blue jacket with a pattern shirt pattern uh, pocket square and i thought this was kind of cool because there's this beige color here i have whoa i almost fell on my green screen <laughs> same color here on the pants as here i also pick it up on the socks and then there's some yellow on the shirt and I thought that the yellow and the orange, it's not the same, but they're in the same ballpark, quite close, and it looks really nice together. And then I had this problem with this. Now I'm going to give you a useful tip that has saved me a couple of times. That, you know, with the shirts, you have these things that you put in the collar to make sure that they stay and, and look pointy and sharp. And now, for some reason, I seem to have misplaced the ones that go with this specific shirt. So when I, I had these in, let's see if I can just put them in like so. Yeah, they are too tall. They don't fit. You see here. So when I put this one down, it just looks, I'm look, I look like a clown or something. So I, I can't really use it. So what do I do? Well, if you, this, this could be useful if you're out traveling and you may, you, you put this one in the, in your, uh, luggage you have you've washed it and ironed it but you forgot to put these ones back and you're gonna go have this important business meeting tomorrow grab a business card because you probably you, you should have a couple of those in hand and then you scissor and you just you, you cut out a similar shape and that's precisely what I did here but I just made them I made them a bit smaller a bit shorter and that that way this one will work it's actually it's a bit tricky to put them in if you yeah it succeeded great <laughs> now it's in place so anyways th 
this this works and it's uh, it saved me when I forgot this once when I was out traveling. You could probably find some other type of thin plastic, maybe some packaging material or something. You just cut it and create your own. So it's could be a lifesaver. Anyways, see you guys later. <laughs>